lot of things that have been standard you know, over the past 20 years in this field are going to be challenged. This is Velocitize Talks, and I'm Lauren Cox. I'm here with Sam Zimmerman, SVP of Platform Partnerships at Blue State. Welcome, Sam. Hi, thanks for having me. I'd love you to tell us a little bit about Blue State and what sets you apart as an agency. So Blue State is a WPP owned agency. Um, we've been in business for a couple decades now. The founders of our agency um, started off in political campaigning and uh, ran the political campaigns for uh, Barack Obama, the online aspects of them. And so um, the practices that now have become ubiquitous around fundraising, uh, can you give us $25? Can you give us 25 more? Can you make it monthly? Um, was really pioneered at that time. Um, and at that time, Blue State had its own uh, platform, uh, a, a SaaS platform to do uh, segmentation, email delivery, and donation processing. Uh, so uh, now there are many tools on the market uh, that, that perform that work. And, uh, and so we are, we've pivoted to really focus just on the strategic and delivery aspects of campaigns, um, which span email, social, uh, advertising, and of course, websites, which is how we come to work with WP Engine. Some people would say that not-for-profits don't have a lot of money and so therefore they have limited resources around how to embrace new technologies um, to support their mission. What type of research is Blue State um, conducting to help address uh, this and, and, and make some recommendations? So just to give some context, um, you know, most nonprofits are have a website and they also have a CRM to keep track of their supporters and partners and volunteers and so forth. Um, they typically run email uh, campaigns, you know, so they keep in touch with their supporter base by email. They take donations. And so there's, you know, four different systems, cloud systems right there um, that, uh, that are shared by most nonprofits. And so some nonprofits use a built for purpose tool for the campaign work, Blackbaud, Every Action, Engaging Networks, Action Network, Neon, there's, there's a, a number of them. And they're really specialized to the needs of this industry. Um, but other organizations are taking the composable stack approach. Um, and this has really been uh, spearheaded or this movement's been spearheaded by the entry of Salesforce into the nonprofit market. And so Salesforce has a platform where you could plug in anything has spurred people to plug in, you know, very specialized tools for email, for fundraising and other other purposes. And so, you, you know, we really see these two different uh, tracks um, beyond those, you know, those issues, then nonprofits based on their mission will have a number of other specialized tools. So they might have um, mobilizing supporters for advocacy actions. They might have in-person events they need to manage. They might do peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. They might manage grants. They might have an online community, offer courses. Um, and that that's not even getting into, are they doing A-B testing? Are they doing personalization? Do they have a data warehouse? Are they trying machine learning? And so not every organization is doing all of these things, as you can imagine, but most organizations we work with are running at least five to seven of totally different products um, to manage their online experience. And that's leading to a lot of data fragmentation. And so, uh, you know, these, these systems are set up, you know, they, they bring in an integrator to configure them um, and, they, you know, they start working with them and the tools are not necessarily talking to each other. And they're, they, you know, staff needs to bring data from one tool and a spreadsheet over to the next tool to keep them synced. Uh, and, you know, that's actually causing a lot of inefficiency and it's a big pain point. So the tech stack is super complex. From what I'm hearing, do you advise um, your clients to simplify? These are, you know, very high level conversations about just how to operate your organization and the technology function within it. And it's not something that can easily be solved overnight. Um, in all of our work, whether we're working on websites, working on email campaigns, or being sort of an agency of record, you know, consulting across all aspects of the digital operation, we really focus on um, bringing all stakeholders on board in the decision-making process and establishing a framework of strategic priorities. So what is the work this, these platforms have to do? How does it power your mission? Um, and 
you know, from identifying sort of North Star priorities, everything else becomes easier to make decisions about and how much effort to invest in where. Um, and so, you know, typically fundraising is a huge priority. So we can't really get the work done if we're not raising the revenue. And that can be an organizing principle about, you know, where do we need to invest in data integration, in new tools, um, or improving the tools that we have, um, even on the website side. Do you hear from your customers or clients what platform they prefer to target their donor audience? The website actually is performing quite well um, in in this downturn. And so um, we are noticing half of our our clients uh, showed an increase in web and revenue attributed only to the website uh, in in last year. And so uh, we think that smart investments in the website can actually uh, sort of provide a a backstop and a base, uh, you know, in a fundraising program. And so some of the types of tactics that we are emphasizing are SEO, make the site more findable and differentiated from similar organizations that are doing similar work. Um, And and that increases the top of funnel opportunity if more people come to the site. Um, And then A-B testing, Uh, and conversion rate optimization. So once they get to the site, uh, make sure that the journeys to the the donation moment are clear um, and then really test the donation experience, the messaging, the images, the placement of the elements on the page uh, to make sure that that you're getting the most performance out of each moment in the journey. Um, And one area that is particularly important uh, to focus on optimizations is the mobile experience. So for nonprofits, about 60% of all traffic to a website is coming from mobile. And that's not terribly surprising. That's, you know, probably reflects uh, industry trends overall. Um, but only 36% of donations are coming from people on mobile. So it's the inverse. So, ha- you know, more than half of the people are coming to the site on mobile, but less than half of, this, of the donors are on mobile. And that's because the even if you have a responsive website, the user journey, you know, the experience of arriving on the site and then being inspired to donate and going through the donation process may actually be somewhat bumpy for a mobile user because it hasn't been assessed as its own journey. Do you focus on open source platforms like WordPress? And if so, um, would you like to share some examples with us? WordPress is a big focus and uh, and open source is a big focus of ours. So we do probably about uh, 75% of our work is in the WordPress framework when we're working on websites and about 25 is in Drupal, um, or maybe we we'll carve out a 5% in there for some other platforms as well. Um, uh, we sometimes do some .NET work. It really depends on what our client is coming to us with and we're happy to meet them you know, wherever they are. Um, the, uh, the advantage of working in WordPress is that it's such a democratized um, field. There are so many people that we can bring into the process to collaborate with. Um, so it's you know, easy to learn. It's where a lot of developers start their careers. Um, and we have, over the past uh, you know, five, six years, um, incorporated uh, partners around the globe into our uh, process and uh, you know team framework, uh, and so from that we've been able to uh, produce a wide range of work at different sizes uh, you know, for organizations of different sizes. So um, one example is uh, the work we do with JDRF, um, you know, very big uh, organization focused on type one diabetes uh, on WP Engine's uh, platform, um, and for years uh, they. Worked with uh, the agency Tenup on the uh, management of their web and design of their website, and we focused on their fundraising and strategic aspects. Um, and uh, and we for a while collaborated together on the on the redesign of their website, which happened around 2018. Um, and uh, you know, I think that WordPress really makes these cross agency and client collaborations possible um, because it, you know it, there is not a lot of bespoke coding that's happening. There's works happening within a defined framework um, and an open framework that is organized for multiple people to plug into. And so I think that's kind of a beauty um, of this. And I I really love that sort of um, collaboration ethos that springs from the tool itself. There have been long heard rumors that websites are dead and apps will take over. 
at the moment, I don't really see that happening right now, but do you have a take on that? Um, or do you feel like something's changing, especially because of the research that you're doing? I, I suspect the statement is true in parts, um, not, not true in total. Um, so uh, the website is not dead. It, it is a, uh, it's a central uh, uh, plank that is, you know, is a must have. Uh, for any organization, you cannot do without a website. Um, but the website is often dormant <laughs> within the organization, whereas it's seen, you know, it's seen as something that we have to have, but it's not a strategic driver. No one's particularly passionate about it. It's not being prioritized for investment compared to other areas of the stack right now. Um, and so um, people are making do with a website that they think is substandard because they don't want to do another redesign. Oh my God, we went through that three years ago. Let's just leave it up for a little while longer, right? So, um, so you know, there is a there's a lack of. Um, I think we're in a moment of lack of passion about websites. They've been around for 30 years now, uh, close to 30 years. It's nothing new. Uh, people don't want to spend a lot of money on them, and um, and I, also this is filtering down to the developer community itself. So, you know, we had just mo uh, mentioned that, you know, WordPress uh, really democratized access to this field. Um, it's sort of where people start. And then after they get their, their footing, they want to do different kinds of work. And so we're actually hearing this from development partners that we work with uh, that, you know, they, their most junior uh, people are willing to work on websites, but the more senior people are not and want to do other types of work, uh, you know, to, to stay at, you know, in, in these uh, in these firms. Um, and so I think that I think that's an issue. Uh, you know, this sort of boredom with websites is an issue that um, is trickling down to how investment priorities are made and, and how many times or how much work is done in a website over a given year. Digital is a great equalizer, but there are some people still struggling with access to technologies and trends, especially in our underserved uh, communities. Do you give any advice to companies on how that they can level the playing field? Whether or not uh, an organization has prioritized creating the most accessible website possible um, or not, um, the we're, it, we are in a moment where what the website means in the larger ecosystem is going to be challenged and and uh, you know and and uh, turned on its head a bit. Where um, it's, this trend has started uh, in the last couple of years uh, with the search engines really sort of taking the poll position and saying if we can deliver the answer to the question without routing the user to the site, we will. Right. So you get you know you ask you ask a question of the search engine and it it shows you the card. It says you know we think this is the best answer and you might just stay you might just consume it right there and may not go further and engage the site. Well now um, ChatGPT and you know the the uh, range of similar tools which are coming out um, are you know taking over all of the engagement with the content and saying, we've slipped it all up. You just stay here and have a conversation with us and we'll give it to you in a conversational format and you'll never actually get to the website at all. And maybe that is the most accessible experience of all, right? Like, and But what does that mean for the organization providing content and how do you shape that story? And how do you eventually get someone to donate you know, you have to your mission if they're you know if they're experiencing uh, that engagement entirely in the chat world. So I think um, you know this ties back to is the website dead? Is the website accessible? I mean, it's going to be sort of a, you know, a philosophically um, uh, front and center topic uh, over the course of this year, where a lot of things that have been standard you know, over the past twenty years in this field are going to be challenged. I would love to finish the interview with a question. Um, what gets you up in the morning? What gets you inspired about your work and career right now? <laughs> well, I would say that you know one of my um, professional superpowers is constructive paranoia, <laughs> where I'm trying to you know see what's around the corner, um, and, you know, and, and imagine the worst outcome possible, and then try to avoid it. Um, and so, um, so I do think that you know the uh, grappling with the implications of the switch to AI um, as you know, the primary UX of the internet is um, something that that's getting me up in the morning right now because I, I you know I, I want to be um, part of what the experience will be next year and not uh, someone who's you know uh, lost uh, lost the wave. 
I want to thank you for joining Velocitize Talks. That was Sam Zimmerman, SVP of Platform Partnerships at Blue State. I'm Lauren Cox, and thank you for joining. Thank you.